Hi, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, Embracing the New Digital Paradigm. First of all, thanks for your time for attending this webinar that will be recorded and will be available on our website on the Italian Issue Tech Association. And you can comfortably um, watch it again uh, if you wish. So today we are going to discuss, of course, a few topics, more specifically three, uh, about what is going on around digitalization. But on top of it, we are going then to discuss with this, the new digital paradigm. Uh, with us today, we have three special guests, and um, they are uh, Gerardo Di Francesco. Good uh, evening. Then we have Shinji Shiraya. Shinji Shiraya is also the Global Due Diligence Coordinator at Swiss Re. Then Pierluigi Fasano as well. Welcome, uh, everybody. Ciao, Pierluigi. He is the Head Tech Partnership at Swiss Re. And I'm going to moderate this session for you. So the webinar is composed, the agenda of, of this webinar is, is composed by three slots. The first one will be, of course, an introduction of the three panelists that we have here today. And they will discuss it about the issue tech investment, standardization, and the actionable insights. After this uh, session, mini session, we're going then to move next to the insurance uh, future that is going to be moderated. Of course, during this session, it's more than welcome if you can um, write question on the chat that you can see here on the platform so that we can pick the question up and we can ask and the question towards the panelists. And then of course, then we will do a wrap up to discuss the key, uh, the key takeaways of this webinar. So let's move uh, from the first step. And the first speaker is Pierluigi Fasano. Pierluigi, please step in, introduce yourself and um, tell us what you have to say about the InsurTech investment. Thank you, Flavio, and uh, thanks uh, to everybody for attending this webinar. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, strategic technology partnerships in uh, Swiss Re, and basically in my profile, I account for uh, about 27 years spent in insurance across any line of business. So the point that we would like to share with you today is something about, you know, uh, where are going the investments, but mostly what I would call it following the money, uh, what these money are going to tell us about the state of the art of uh, innovation in insurance or what is uh, happening or what will happen in the next future. So here, what we have on the on the slide is a couple of uh, uh, views which basically tell a bit of the story that you can find nearly on any headline about insurtech and insurance. So from one side, there is the flow of money that from uh, typically venture capital type of activities uh, are going into uh, insurtech, so which is a bit of the edge of innovation. And you can clearly see how in reality, the spending is heavily skewed uh, towards basically uh, distribution, uh, which means uh, replacing uh, the intermediation process, uh, typically to broker and agents, uh, probably investing in apps, uh, in uh, portals, in electronic distribution. There seems to be very little left uh, to the other elements of innovation, even more, I would call it strongly, to what should be probably the core, which is product development. On the other side, if we think that uh, product development is probably where the incumbent uh, would play a bigger role, uh, it's interesting to see how in big insurances are spending uh, their money into information technology. And for me, one of the points which uh, is very, very interesting is uh, the biggest percentages are located basically to meeting uh, regulatory requirements. So most of the concerns or most of the resources are flowing uh, toward uh, keeping lights on, basically, and uh, uh, keeping up uh, with uh, regulations and adjusting legacy systems. This is a bit of the dichotomy uh, of the world. But it's also interesting how this can play uh, as a story in terms of uh, the newcomers uh, are uh, revolutionizing the world. They are going to focus on the customer journey, uh, jumping the inefficient distribution while the incumbents are sleeping. If we go to the next uh, uh, slide, we can see that 
behind the scene, uh, doing a bit of homework in terms of uh, getting some data around uh, how things are going on the ground, we can see a slightly different picture. So there is one point that I would really like to highlight, which is uh, when you go uh, into insurance companies and you ask uh, to the top management what are their priorities, there is an interesting study, I think it was from Oliver Wyman, which was putting uh, the two top priorities uh, in terms of uh, the number one efficiency, the number two innovation. I mean, it's interesting because in the literature you can find tons of uh, explanations why innovation is everything but efficient. So clearly having two top priorities which are uh, contradicting in some way in terms of goal is already an interesting indication about how the insurance are a bit confused on how to go ahead. On the other side, you know, there is uh, uh, the narrative about uh, insure tech will just take over the world. You know, incumbents will disappear and uh, the newcomers uh, will uh, take the, the, uh, the world. If you look into the distributed, the, the last picture on the site, what you see is that basically in very few simple words, when people are switching insurance, uh, nearly in average, 80% uh, of the time, they end up in a switch into another incumbent. So there is very little or nearly close to nothing in certain uh, geographical areas, which really goes into insure tech. So what's Basically, the message is that InsureTech are for sure bringing innovation, but this innovation at the moment is not really uh, capturing uh, the heart uh, probably of the large base of consumers of insurance. And incumbents uh, still play a big role and make probably the big money. The other element is that we always focus in a kind of dualism between uh, InsureTech and incumbents. And there is always a kind of latent uh, picture about the big tech players. We are talking of the Amazon, the Google, you know, of this world. There is an interesting survey from uh, Bain, uh, which uh, in this case I was looking uh, especially focusing on Italy. Uh, so it, it is very handy for this type of webinar, where they were asking uh, to, the, uh, to a wide range of uh, millennial consumers, uh, how do, would they see, where do, would they buy insurance? Uh, starting, of course, uh, from typically the first answer is always a primary insurer. So typically the place where they already buy. But it's interesting that uh, the second answer is never the insure tech. So they would expect to buy this, uh, preferably from uh, Amazon and Google that you see always ranked uh, nearly as the second uh, uh, option. So this means that there is uh, an expectation, there is uh, a latent demand uh, from consumers that probably is not satisfied again from the insure tech and probably is also a matter of trust and convenience. So most of the consumers are already having uh, a relationship uh, with these players through their devices, phones or whatever. And clearly they expect probably to be more directly approached uh, for insurance by those services other than you know, uh, an insure tech player. S trying to bring all together, uh, what we can uh, derive is a couple of things. So, so probably the narrative of the insure tech uh, revolutionizing the world is a bit of an exaggeration. There is a lot of truth in terms of things need to be changed. Uh, there is also a lot of truth in the fact that incumbents are basically quite inefficient in terms of how they work when you see the IT spending, but of course they are still able to capture the market. There is a third uh, avenue, which is uh, what the big tech uh, players will do. My suggestion is probably to stay tuned into the webinar because probably a couple of things that uh, insurance players can do is uh, to try to become much better into how they manage the data, uh, which is the basis on which also the big tech players are uh, overtaking and also how to become uh, much more efficient in the, in the way they do their own business. And with this, I will pass to the next. Thanks. Thanks, Pierluigi. Super uh, interesting what you said, of course, and we come back to this topic uh, during the second uh, session. So, uh, Gerardo, what you can say then uh, about the data standardization, just to... Yeah. 
Welcome everybody, I'm Gerardo Di Francesco, uh, General Secretary of Italian InsurTech Association and uh, co-founder of Wide Group SPA. And first of all, thank you Pierluigi for the assist because <laughs> my, my topic uh, is really focused uh, on uh, two issues, efficiency and data standardization. Okay, uh, the digital transformation that we are living nowadays uh, is, is, is booming in terms of data. And uh, thanks to my um, main uh, job, that is the managing partner of White Group, I have the opportunity to have a close look uh, to several databases of colleagues. Uh, and I also have the opportunity to interact uh, on a machine machine basis with the insurance company. And uh, today we are living a kind of uh, Babele momentum. Okay, so everyone uh, is speaking his own languages and uh, everyone is building up uh, uh, digital transformation on its own data. And it is a super difficult task. Uh, I saw a lot of projects where maybe tech vendors came to an insurance company and say, yeah, don't worry, machine learning will fix any kind of problem, you know, because you have the structured data and I will build up a super nice and clean database. Okay, this is not true. There is a, 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 a very old proverb in the tech industry that uh, is shit in, shit out. So it's very difficult to transform this kind of input in a clear and nice output. If we skip to the next slide, I would like to um, present a project that, in my opinion, is one of the main project uh, that needs to be supported uh, globally regarding data standardization. As we know, Accord uh, is one of the main players in data standard, and uh, um, there is an initiative that is the Rushlikon initiative. The Rushlikon is uh, an initiative that has been uh, um, created by several reinsurance companies, Swiss Re included. I think that was maybe the, the first one that uh, launched the, the, the project because if I'm not wrong, Ruslikon is, is a small village in Switzerland. It's correct, Pierluigi? Yeah, okay. It's absolutely correct. It's our research center. Okay, so yeah, Swiss Re was more than the first to, <laughs> to join the Ruslikon project. And basically, Ruslikon has the, 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 the target uh, to harmonize and, 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 and spread a standard among the reinsurance company and also with the insurance company and also with the broker. So we, we see that the stakeholders involved in this project are all the player in the ecosystem, okay? And uh, the, the kind of data that run on a Rushlikon database are iCOT and iBot uh, that are also supported by another interesting initiative that is the B3i. B3i is an infrastructure, infrastructural initiative that, of course, uh, uh, is based on blockchain. We are speaking actually of a permissioned blockchain network. Uh, and uh, the DLT uh, technology is the Corda one, if I'm not wrong, and uh, run this kind of data too. Of course, we're speaking about different stuff. I mean, B3i are, are, are more the piping line and Rushlikon is more the oil. By the way, today I received uh, the newsletter from uh, Rushlikon and uh, I, I, I read in the newsletter that they switch from Rushlikon database that I mentioned a few minutes ago to Rushlikon adoption directory. RID, okay, RID seems to be, I, I, I didn't test it yet because I received the newsletter just a few hours ago, but RID seems to be a more evolved platform uh, in respect of Rushikon database where all the player can interact and exchange data. Which kind of data? Uh, starting from the financial and accountant data, uh, the Rushikon standard has been moved also on the claim and also on the PNC uh, data in respect of the risks itself, uh, which is the, 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 the point of uh, this kind of initiative. In Italy, we have also other initiatives like uh, SHARE, that is uh, uh, the SHARE standard is another initiative from uh, um, an association of, of uh, software house. And uh, for example, there is also IBA Digital, that is another initiative uh, that has been promoted by the broker association. The point is to make more efficient the interaction among the stakeholders. Because as we, we learn from Pierluigi uh, slides, that is that the first player that needs to be more efficient are the incumbent now. 
okay. in the digital transformation. No? And the innovation that has been brought uh, from InsurTech uh, in, in the exception of startup InsurTech, okay? because in my opinion, InsurTech is the wall, is the meeting between technology and insurance industry. So if in this webinar, we are going to, I'm going to use InsurTech referring to the startup, is to bring more clean database. That's the main advantages, in my opinion, of startup uh, in comparison with uh, uh, with incumbent player, okay? So it's, it's the legacy issue because deal with complex data, it's very difficult. Uh, coming back to the, 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 the first example of the, the, the consulting firm that, that tell to the customer, don't worry, I will fix your data. I, I, I saw from the tech vendor side, a kind of underestimation of the complexity that you can have in a database with 50 years layers of data. Okay, 50 years, everything can change in this kind of database. On the other side, I see sometimes, of course, I'm, I'm generally speaking, from the management of the incumbent, uh, a kind of overestimation of this technology. So there is this kind of uh, not alignment between the part. Uh, and I think that this is one of the main, uh, main reason why this kind of project basically failed. Okay, and I, 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 I mean, I experienced myself the failure <laughs> of this kind of project, so I'm not judging anyone. They, they fail because they are complex and, and also for this kind of reason of not alignment between consultancy or tech vendor and, 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 and customer. So in that phase, what we need is starting to learn to interact from uh, each company to this kind of initiative. So we need to move from this Babele momentum to a kind of uh, Pax Romana, let's say so. Thank you so much and uh, Shinji, your call. Thanks, Shinji. Are you there? Are you in? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hi, China. So my name is Shinji Shirai. Uh, like Pierre Luigi, I'm also in the insurance industry for 27 years. But unlike him, I am spend all of my time at the Swiss Re. But I'm, I'm very fortunate to work in a different function, like uh, aviation, property, casualty, underwriting, client market. But with my current uh, function, a sort of end-to-end -end process uh, uh, consulting, for our client, uh, I'm tr truly privileged to see over 70 clients in 30 countries in the last five years. So, the first digital transformation, some say that it is not just about using cutting technology, but also using the technology to do the business in a different way or new way. And for me, uh, it is about cultural shift. The, you create a culture that uh, worship the data. So the organization who believe in data and produce the actionable insights. Yes, the actionable insights of which prompt you action. Today, I would like to talk about the two attributes, speed and the purpose. So first, the speed matters. I couldn't think of any a better example in this audience to bring Formula One. And I guess you know all about Formula One. But do you know that the, the modern Formula One car has over 120 sensor, which generate over staggering 1.1 million uh, telemetry data points per every second transmitting from the vehicle to the pits during the whole Grand Prix. And what do they use so much data uh, is adjusting the strategy, right? But uh, for fans, uh, even more interesting, since this creates some excitement, when you can expect some of the interesting battles, a pit strategy, in ever changing the environment, right? So the information is used to predict not for the next year, not for months, 
not even for tomorrow, but the very next second. So they are clearly using insights to action. And why do, do they do it? For what? I guess win the race, right? Uh, and then this is what it takes to win the race. And even more importantly, the win the world championship. So speed really matter. Could you move to the next slide? So what are we going to use the data for us in our industry? Making more money? Uh, is, is it our sole purpose? I don't think so, but, but the problem is many people think it that way. The problem is not so many people do not understand the real value of insurance, especially enabling part, right? So without insurance, there will be no big project. You should be scared to death to drive a car. Aircrafts do not fly. We cannot send a rocket to the space. Uh, talking about space, I read the article just yesterday that whether Tom Cruise can go to space to shoot the film is now relying on whether he can get insurance or not. So our industry has um, actually a noble cause to so protect life and then their assets. And I know that Italy has a rich culture of this and we all should be proud to be part of this such noble cause, right? We are living in uh, such unpleasant time. So I brought uh, this chart, uh, many of you may know, uh, Florence, Florence Nightingale Lord's chart published in 1858. This diagram shows the cause of the uh, mortality in the army of East. This diagram pointed out the uh, how many people are dying from disease than battles. These insights prompted systematic, systemic change in the hospital design and operation, as well as revolution in sanitization. And the result, the Britain's national life expectancy increased by 20 years. It's 20 years. I guess now we all understand why the British named COVID-19 hospitals after her. So back to our industry, we have a noble cause. We are instrumental in en enabling and creating resilience in the society. But unfortunately, value is often realized at, at the best in the post event. But what if? our contribution also move from the post event to the prevention. If I take about, if I talk about this five years ago, perhaps people say that, uh, are you talking nuts about destroying our own value, uh, our own value proposition? If we can prevent things to happen, what do people buy for insurance? Perhaps yes, but uh, I gather that the today's participants probably think that there is a possibility. The technology is certainly there, as Gerald already mentioned, but uh, we need to be more focused on our purpose. And for this scenario, speed really also matters. Thank you. Flavio, we cannot hear you. Now you should hear me. Yes, indeed. I, I heard some uh, um, someone that activate my, my microphone. Thanks a lot. Uh, so thanks for, for your speech, uh, Shinji and Gerardo and uh, Pierluigi. So let's let's move to the uh, 
a moderation session now because uh, it's where I think now we can connect what you uh, said uh, a few moments ago because it will be now interesting to um, talk about the future of insurance uh, in this specific moment. So here, the future here, I would like to, to just maybe to introduce the fact that in the, in the market, what we're experiencing is that like uh, the insurance is seeing that is moving in a way of uh, creating ecosystem. Um, so I would like to address the first question to you. Um, but what do you think about like the creation of ecosystem in the market? And if you think also if it's useful in the uh, Italian market, and then also if you can a bit move about, uh, raise up uh, also to a more broad level. So not only uh, from, you know, the, the successful story worldwide, but also in Italy and coming down. Do you think that ecosystem is something that uh, is going to happen in Italy or what do you think about it? Okay, uh, may I start? Yes, Gerardo. So uh, actually, I think that in Italy, uh, the ecosystem uh, are already happening. Um, first of all, something that I forgot to mention before in my, in my speech is that one of the country, one of the pilot country for the Ryushlikon initiative is the Italian market. This is very remarkable. The first one, if I'm not wrong, was the, the, the French one. And now, uh, starting from 2020, also the Italian market joined the, the, initi the initiative and there is a committee that has the task to spread it in the, in the Italian market and the uh, Italian InsurTech Association will, will help him to, to, to perform this, this task. But, and, and, and the second thing is that, I mean, we are hearing the words ecosystem almost everywhere. Okay, in every kind of newsletter, podcast, uh, article, research, uh, television, uh, magazine, everywhere, everywhere, everything is an ecosystem. But what does it mean, ecosystem? Okay, I mean, Swiss Re, okay, a super huge uh, multinational is part of an ecosystem. I mean, in my opinion, if we intend as an ecosystem a group of players that need to exchange something in order to, to, to move on in, in, their, in their business, uh, we already, we always add an ecosystem, okay? The point is the transformation of this ecosystem and the impact on the ecosystem of the, of the digital tools that we are having. So in my, in my view, the discussion is not about uh, do we have or not we have an ecosystem. The, 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 the discussion is about which are the impact on the ecosystem of digital transformation. And I can see that the first one is the speed, okay? The speed of processing data, the speed of creating new data, and the speed of clearing a settlement among the stakeholder of the, let's call it, ecosystem again, okay? So the second point uh, is also the, the, the risk that we can have in this ecosystem due uh, 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 to a massive digitalization. Because if each node of the ecosystem, if each part of the ecosystem is deeply linked to all the other parties, we need to estimate very, very well which are the risks of this kind of data structure, okay? Because one cyber attack or human error, okay, can affect more player, okay? So uh, I, I would like to, to build up a discussion in the near future inside the, inside the association about this kind of topic so that are how the digitalization are affecting the ecosystem that before the digital transformation has been called the industry. My two seconds. Thanks, Gerardo. Very, in, in, very insightful what you said. Um, and you um, touch an interesting point, which is the speed and is also an insight that uh, Shinji just before mentioned. So Shinji, I would like to hear your voice here and uh, since the insights of speed has been touched. Speed is in very, very important because of the how basically the data can produce the actionable things. But when it comes to the ecosystem or, or platform, the, the real question is why such an ecosystem exists, right? And especially when we're talking about our industry, our product. So what does it mean 
is it the ecosystem where people go and buy insurance? So if this is the case, for me, not just the speed, but the convenient, right? If you look all the very successful uh, platform ecosystem, first of all, obviously the, the customer is always in the middle, but the extreme, the convenient, and sometimes even the convenience is more stronger choice than quality. So what our industry always need to think is what if someone is coming to the ecosystem and try to purchase insurance, is this the way to go because it gives the ultimate convenience? So speed, yes, uh, but when it comes to the ecosystem, I, I guess, especially for our industry, the convenience, so easy to use, easy to access, easy to find. Um, so this is how I see it probably from the ecosystem. Thanks, Shinji. Uh, very insightful um, what you said, because um, here, what, what you were talking for me, um, I think that the speed needs to, needs of course need to put into track somehow. You you before you said about you know the Formula One uh, example um, and also in the market the speed needs also to be correlated uh, to somewhere which is a track uh, which is I call it the four plan um, because we need to find a common base and Gerardo said before the standardization of the data i think it's where we should uh, start from uh but uh, we cannot do it without that if we don't have like uh, um, investment and because it's a kind of the fuel uh, on where then you know can uh, make start this engine works and i would like them to come back to you to, uh, to pierluigi uh, because i would like to understand what is your th uh, thought behind uh, what we just uh, discussed here I think that we touched mainly on a, a couple of things which are very uh, fundamental and for me also a bit controversial in terms of, you know, uh, Gerardo was pointing to ecosystem, you know, uh, a bit with this uh, philosophical question, uh, at the end of the day, what is an ecosystem? So when I look at the, the type of market I'm uh, working with, uh, you know, for me, the more interesting definition is something that correlates uh, to a, is a real customer need. So the ecosystem is there to fulfill and to, in reality, make much more fluid, much more uh, easy. This process of uh, getting a, a customer, you know, uh, fulfilled uh, with these needs. So from that point of view, whatever comes behind. And this is where data and speed both plays a fundamental role. So when, uh, when you think about you know the uh, the whole space of uh, usage based insurance so where you think about uh, products uh, that get tailored towards uh, what the customer needs at what point in time uh, to what kind of interactions that's where the ecosystem which is an aggregation of partners that basically can fulfill the type of value is starting to become really uh, different than the previous definition which was just a bunch of guys basically uh, getting together to do a, a bit better their back of business. So I want to put it uh, just a bit uh, uh, straight, the point that, yes, insurance is an ecosystem because we always trying to manage uh, our work much better. You know, there are tons of back office processes in insurance to guarantee that uh, the single policy that has been underwritten somewhere, you know, uh, gets distributed, gets uh, the right reserves, uh, gets uh, spread in uh, retrocessions and so on and so forth. So, but that's just, uh, I'll call it office work, which of course has to become as efficient as possible, but still does not change dramatically the value for the client. So the point is uh, more interesting for me is uh, where are we going with the speed towards the client? So how much can we really change, for example, the coverages? How much can we adapt to the changing customer landscape of risk? So that, that's the part which, honestly, I'm a bit disappointed 
when I see where the market stand in reality for those things. Thanks, Pierluigi. It's um, interesting what you just said, because um, I think that what we is also true to say and fair to say that the digital transformation it happening it happening since uh, decades. It's uh, not the news uh, that is coming in the market. <clears throat> So um, uh, now it's a matter to understand from this uh, change where it comes from. It's uh, bottom up or top down. It could, or in more specifically here, it means from a product or from the distribution or for or from the uh, uh, or, or enter the for the value chain. It could be from the insurance market on the on their insurance. And uh, so the question that we'd like to to ask you is from where do you think that this this change that can can happen. I mean, it's uh, from from which which angle do you think uh, from the entire value chain uh, this change of the digitalization can get in and then can start the change. And another uh, piece of the question, if I may, I is also that. Um, do you think that uh, also um, <clears throat> this change? Um, how then uh, it is going then to 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 shape the market? You think like uh, innovation is exactly that we need here or do you think something that we need to let it go by inertia? Okay, give a first go. Uh, and as usual, I will be a bit provocative in the answer. So for me, it will come outside of our supply chain, our value chain. So I don't think that uh, as an industry, we demonstrated enough will, strength, uh, power, to really change dramatically uh, how we do certain things. So I see that we invest money into uh, making more efficient what we do, but that's a different thing. So if you ask me uh, where it's coming from, probably is, uh, you know, uh, I gave you some hints about uh, in the slide. So there are, there are other industries which are already working in a multi uh, domain of business which are natively very efficient, which are natively customer centric. You know, I always joke on the fact that uh, insurance is the only business in the world where the client is called in another name, is a policy holder. <laughs> so, uh, if you start from that, uh, which is a bit of a joke, but in reality, not too much. Uh, you know, insurance has an entire dictionary to learn how to call normal things in business just in another way. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally agree. And also in, in your presentation, Pierluigi, uh, you, you showed uh, in the US column of the last picture, you know, we saw as uh, the, main, uh, the main minority was the, the, the open insurance. So telco, uh, automotive uh, and uh, retail, I mean, name it, okay, GDO. Okay, and uh, uh, this is interesting. In, in fact, this year we, we, we are promoting an uh, um, observatory on open insurance uh, that uh, has the target to create a kind of uh, mapping of all the open insurance initiatives. I'll give you an example. The, the mapping is a very basic mapping. So who is the distributor, for example, telco or automotive, which is the insurance party, okay? The insurance partner, sorry, for this project, which is the product that will be distributed by the, 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 the newcomer, let's call it that way, and which is the technology that are main involved in this thing. And, if, and, and during Pierluigi's speak, I was thinking about, for example, Tesla or um, initiative. I, I didn't saw Tesla. You put it in the, in, in the slide. You, I saw Google, Amazon. I didn't saw Tesla. By the way, and in the same time, I was thinking to our data model. Look, in our data model, first of all, First thing, the column of the customers is the policy holder. So <laughs> just a confirmation <laughs> is named the policy holder uh, column. And uh, I was thinking about the number of data in terms of uh, data, the calendar, you know, that are linked uh, to any position. Is an insane amount uh, of data, expiring date, inception date, cancellation date, payment date, uh, um, 
uh, ref first refusal uh, date. I mean, there are then there are all the data that are linked to this data in order to allow the RPA to work. Okay, so if I have to send you automatic email or remind or stuff like that, all the bot need to be programmed according to the data. So that my data model. This is my nightmare and my beloved because I will uh, I live with it. But the point is. If we want to make instant insurance, for example, okay, that has minute in their data model that change every time, every, how can you fit this new data in your data model? It's not possible. <laughs> so so uh, uh, I, I'm finishing. I'm agree with Pierluigi that a big part uh, of the new things uh, will came from uh, outside the industries from other ecosystem, let's call uh, again, let's use again this bucket. And, and one of the reasons is the reason that it's super difficult to fit this kind of new data with the data that runs our company. That's my opinion. Thanks, Gerardo. Uh, yeah, uh, Shinji. I, I will have a bit of a go and um, listening to, to, to James. I, I completely agree, uh, but maybe i would try to spin here so we talk about innovation and pierre luigi actually talk about why we do innovate and mainly to optimize the process uh, and i had a recently a, a example from japan uh, using satellite Im imagery and also using social network data. So in, when it comes to the flood, um, the company said they usually take two to three weeks to pay the claims to the policy holders. But uh, with this technology, they can pay in certain way in the same day, right? This, this is a, a cool technology satellite and social network and you pay much quicker from three weeks to the same day right but kind of i was reading article and they didn't talk about any new product uh anything right so if you really read this i start to wonder who, who is really benefiting because People immediately feel that if uh, the people get the money instead of three weeks to the same day, th this sh should be a benefit, right? But uh, this is where I'm coming back what uh, basically Pierre Luigi said. So basically this also means that uh, the insurance company can save the amount of work that they've been doing to three weeks to the one day. And so th this is a probably sometimes a difficulty when we are talking about innovation. And we sometimes just feel that the paying the same day to the customer is good for customer, but there is probably no data to prove that this is the case, right? So uh, this is probably reason and I feel the same that the, the innovation comes outside because outside start to look the customer needs much more carefully also by using data. Thanks, Shinji. Uh, again, here one of uh, the, the, the most important aspect is the, the customer, so the persona, because we it, during our conversation, I noticed that uh, one of uh, the, the common things around the, what you said is the product. And the product, of course, it's uh, the very first things that, could, that ultimately goes in the market that the persona will want to, uh, that, that, that want to uh, have. So a product is definitely um, the, a clear signal that the, in the insurance market is an approach on where the change comes from the bottom up. I'm just wondering then the effect of having an innovative product, how then how it can change 
uh, the, also the distribution, because clearly this is a strictly interconnect uh, product and distribution. And this question is for Gerardo, because uh, he, uh, of course, uh, he's uh, um, an intermediary and actually is a broker aggregator. So I would like to understand if how he sees that if there is an innovative product, how can then change the distribution um, towards the market? I'll use the Pierluigi's approach to this question. So I will be provocative a little bit. But I mean, what, what we, do we mean with innovative? product okay so because i mean i think that the structure of the product in our industry it's very very uh, strong and it's very difficult to uh, exit uh, from the the very basic structure of all the product okay so if we have a, a household policy life policy motor policy uh, um, third party liability product liability i mean what is a new product Okay, and uh, in my opinion, an angle that can bring a real new product, so something very out, out of the box in terms of, uh, of value proposition, can arrive from uh, a, um, parametric uh, insurance, okay? Because uh, parametric insurance is a paradigm of insurance, very, very broad, of course, and it can be adaptable to uh, uh, several number of, of data sets. Okay, so thanks to the, the, the increasing of data, for example, uh, Sinji named the, the, the social network data, or we named the mobility data came from uh, uh, the, the, the last kind of, uh, of, of motor vehicle like Tesla or uh, Toyota, or for example, the, the health data that we can assume from wearable and, and, and also the modern, uh, the modern uh, med tech. I think that that can be an angle. So, the new product can arrive from parametric, but they are still to come. I mean, I'm not seeing such many revolutionary product on the market. That's my opinion. I want to um, start from here because it's, um, I find uh, insightful and meaningful what you said, because um, actually, if I, I said, you say that you, you know, you, you start questioning the meaning about, you know, the world of ecosystem and the meaning of innovation. From my personal point of view, uh, the entire, the ultimately, or actually the fourth meaning of what is going on around, I think it stands in one word that is resilience. And uh, because then, you know, you can have the most fascinating product, parametric, or also an a super basic product, but ultimately what is going to happen is that we're going to make uh, the resilience, which is a function of insurance. So, and then of course you can find a new product that can maybe change uh, something in the market or not, but ultimately the important is that um, we have to, to make this function. And um, what um, also Pierluigi in the beginning said is that, uh, uh, we, we should find um, also um, a way on where we start uh, doing this one, especially in this very moment uh, in time. So I would like maybe Per Luigi, if you have maybe some talks here, if you can uh, maybe uh, tell us, which is for you, the meaning uh, of what's going on and of course, Sinji, and of course, Gerardo, uh, the last word to you as well. So for me, I give a very concrete answer in terms of uh, what I'm doing right now, because in reality, this is the space I'm tackling. And basically for me, at the moment, innovation is defined by a substantial change on all the three axes of the client, the product, and the access to market. So clearly, uh, I'm not going after the change of just one of those dimensions, but it's really redefining the way you uh, deal, let's call it, with the concern of the customer. You were talking of resilience, you know, it's not always, insurance is not always the answer. So if you have a concern about protection, which at the end of the day is what we are after, it's not a given that insurance is always the, the, the only answer or the best answer. So that's one thing, expanding the area of concerns that we can help the client to cover. So, and this, influence immediately what is the product. 
so as Gerardo was saying, you know, it's not about understanding if we are looking after just a new peril or the extension of the peril or whatever. Could be we are tackling other type of concerns, can be mobility, can be the health space, it can be the life space, you know. There is so much that is not addressed by insurance, but is a concern, is a risk for the client. And the third part is how you bring all of these things into the life of the people. And this is why the market access probably will be much more about uh, embedding uh, insurance protection into customer journey, which are already existing uh, for a main reason. So this is where, in my opinion, uh, innovation really, uh, this is the innovation at least uh, that matters to me. All the other things, there are various levels of innovation. I'm, I'm not uh, di uh, di uh, dismissing this part. If we really talk of changing something as a paradigm, that's what it is for me. Thanks, uh, Pierluigi. So maybe I go next. Uh, I, I completely agree, so I couldn't add any more, but I would like to give a bit of example. Um, so my wife is a huge fan of the printed photograph, and we have a bookshelf full of photo albums. Generally, they talk about um, home product, right? Do, do you ever ask yourself as an insurance person what we are covering and ask our policy holder, do they know what they're covering, right? So here, probably, this is what the biology tried to probably say. So if we don't know what they are covering, and if they don't know what they are co they are paying for, and in this specific case, my wife really care about this printed, uh, and there are early levels of photo. Obviously, it's not in a digital format. So, if there's a flood, and these photo would probably gone and can be gone forever. So. I think this is something what uh, Pierre Ruiz was probably alluding is when we're talking about the sense of protection and maybe is this something we should do? And I think here there may be a potential answer to what, what we are talking. Thanks, Shinji. And uh, Gerardo? Yeah, uh, um... I'm totally agree with, with Pierluigi Sinji, and uh, uh, I was hoping in more uh, fighting in this webinar <laughs> since the beginning. <laughs> Luigi we discussed a lot about. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll try to, to provide uh, another angle on innovation uh, that is that uh, innovation needs to start also from the people, okay, that works in this industry. Our industry, uh, there is uh, another uh, catchword in English that is uh, the stupid son is in insurance, no? That uh, has a kind of stigma, no? It's a kind of great industry with boring people just speaking about mourning, death, uh, and disgraces, okay? I, I think that now is the time to, to start uh, to trigger the innovation as a state of mind uh, of the people in the industry, doing activities like that, speaking uh, each other and fighting each other about the uh, topic regarding innovation and technology and doing learning activities uh, for the community. All in Italy, of course, my, my, I mean, my piece of garden is the Italian market. I'm, I have no ambition to be global, a global guy also with my company. I mean, in Italy, the insurance industry employ 350,000 people with 120 billion euro of turnover and 750 billion euro of, of investment. And half of these investments are in public debts, okay? So we're speaking about an infrastructure industry that needs to bring innovation starting from its people. That that my 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 idea, because uh, you cannot have a... a, a because one of the main issues of the innovation is the adoption, okay? So you, you, we should start to, to, to push a, a, a bottom-up innovation process more than a top-down innovation process. This is my, 
evangelic message about innovation. I, I if I can, uh, just a compliment to one element uh, to uh, also to to increase the level of fight uh, with the job. <laughs> but otherwise, you know, it would be not. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, Bill Gates was saying that uh, uh, the world needs banking, but not bankers. So at the same time, what is emerging now, and this was partially uh, into the slides about, you know, where people expect next, you know, insurance, and they were mentioning Amazon, Google. So people want probably protection, uh, insurance, uh, doesn't mean that uh, they want insurers. Yeah but we cannot kill all the insurer in the world. I mean, I, I, basically, I'm, I'm against the, the work. So I think that uh, an uh, evolute civilization uh, uh, doesn't need the, the, the hard work, you know? Wake up in the morning, try to sell another insurance or doing your back office activities. And I think that the digitalization, in general speaking, uh, has to free the time of the people. So, yeah. Why not to have a world without insurer, but with uh, with insurance uh, and with uh, not so much time invested in work, doing more interesting activities like reading a book or see a movie or stay with the family. I, I would. I know that uh, you are going to cut uh, this, uh, Flavio. But uh, just just one last uh, stone uh, against the wall. You know. Go ahead. Uh, so if in. 2021, hmm. with a car that basically has, uh, I don't know, millions of times uh, the power of uh, Apollo 11 in terms of computation, you know, you cannot still enter into the car, switch on, uh, having on screen, uh, what kind of protection do you want, you know, adapting to where the car goes, uh, automatically paying a bit less, you know, uh, if you are on a less traveled road, uh, uh, differently if it is by night or by day, you know, all these kind of things that absolutely should be there. And we are so far away because you are talking of an exchange of papers happening somewhere, you know, and when we talk of telematics at the best, we talk of uh, basically if you're driving uh, more than 10,000 kilometers or not. Yeah, I, I, again, agree. So, that, uh, the insurance industry is condemning itself all alone. So nobody will kill insurance. We just do everything by themselves. Uh, yes, I mean, I think that um, I would like to make maybe a bit of contribute. I mean, it's uh, because I think now we just uh, move away in a high level and um, then I would like maybe to, to raise it down because it's been before has been raised up a fantastic word from Gerardo, which is like uh, we need to talk about also people. And um, then we I would like to maybe go in that direction, uh, people and innovation. And also what you said before to you, Pier, uh, Pierluigi, about product and product ultimately means like persona and the persona is the, in the center. So I would like then at the end uh, tackling that. But when there is a provocative things, uh, also by nature, I know what it means. I would like also maybe to, to contribute as well here uh, because I think that it, um, being provocative, it's, um, it's clearly it's one tool, okay, to to make a kind of move, uh, and then when you do a kind of move, then you go into a phase on where there is confusion, and there is confusion, uh, there is growth, okay. But then when there is the growth, then you have to put in order these kind of things. So it's a kind also a kind of methodology that you have to do it. Otherwise, what is going to happen is it stands like as a confusion, and then I think we are in the phase on where we are going in this in this in this uh, direction of course some other things can fly in the air but then ultimately then this needs to find a ground on where then we need to go and we, where we need to go it's what we said before it's about people and trainings and also the right mindset when you do innovation but not only a solution and when we talk about traditional and so i would like then to ask a question about uh, um trainings and people about that so what what, what uh you're doing in your in, in your company or also the association can you spend a couple of words here about around people how they feel how they make comfortable especially in this very moment on where we are changing the really the way we are living actually we are having this webinar from home 
I'm, I'm here at all. Uh, and this was unthinkable maybe before. Uh, it was maybe a meeting uh, on a, in a room. So uh, can you just tell us how you tackle like the human being factor, which is the X factor, X factor. So in terms of mindings and, and, and trainings in, within your company. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in my company, the human factor is a very is the most complex one, more than the data model, <laughs> because dealing with human <laughs> and dealing with M and A is a very challenging activity. And um, I can give you an example. We, you know, that we we are very uh, obsessed with RPA, you no? Know? So. And uh, uh, all the um, administrative part uh, as managed by Foodsy algorithms. Uh, so the clearing and settlement are mainly automatic, and all the back office, all the back office, ninety percent of the back office is managed by bot. So when you acquire a new company and you meet an employee and you tell him, "Look, you know the activity that you you did for the last uh, twenty years." So that activity will be performed by a bot. We will find it for you, new activity, less boring with more value. And you will have more free time and your salaries will increase. No? So the logic tells you that the reaction can be, wow, thank you, where, where I have to sign, you know? Actually, the main reaction is fear. And... Uh, as Edgar Allan Poe said, that the human fear what they don't know. Okay, so that's the point. The first point is try to make it clear to the people how is working the technology of the company. Okay, and try to make them part of the evolution of the, the, the technology. We used an agile method and we release like three commit every day at least on our code. Our code is open source based with uh, a Ruby on Rails architecture. Okay, and, uh, and the, the 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 wonderful things that we are uh, accomplishing now is that uh, all the developer start to know about insurance, and all the insurance uh, workers start to know about uh, developing. So I think that regarding this aspect, uh, the human factor, the, the, the point number one is to disinnescare the, the, the known. And you can do it uh, speaking about it, joking about it, challenging it, building it together. That, that are the, the, the strategy that we are putting in place on that topic. Fascinating. Thanks, uh, Gerardo, for this uh, super uh, uh, insights. Uh, I would like to, to remind also to the audience, if you have a question, you can, of course, uh, use the chat function, uh, or if you want also to speak up, we try to do our best to, to also make uh, hear your voice during this uh, um, moderation, uh, moderation session. Um, so thanks, Gerardo, for, for your contribution about uh, um, things. Uh, which is, is super important here and about people, how you build up the, these kind of things that of course leads to um, make, to, to make, find or build up also resources into the, the people that of course it's into a community, which of course it's your company ultimately. Uh, Shinji, would like to hear your voice again here because you are uh, for me uh, the person that gives a lot of insights. Can you maybe contribute here? about people people yes innovation so, and people mindset and trainings or something yes. of course i know that they touch that uh, some words but maybe your voice to towards insight for me would be uh, thanks Fabio. so the first of all what what jerry said is so true right so it's a COVID situation is a perfect example because we still don't know what is going to happen how long we it is going to be like this and of course scares us and digital transformation is absolutely the same right and the, the big buzzword when we're talking about transformation and as basically also Gerald said we will automate everything right and but at the same same time Gerald actually said very very important things in the 
opening of his speech, uh, if I am reading some of the um, article, so basically only 5% of total digital transformation project exceed or basically par with the expectation. So it means basically 95% of the time it fails, right? So they believe in technology, they believe in AI, but they don't believe in their own people who've been doing. So there is a kind of a sense of now that those people who are facing that their job may be lost. So, and I think what Gerard said is so true. Actually, it will not happen right away, but uh, it, it will be a gradual change and important things to, but not here, because the problem is then oh, it, it takes nearly forever or it will come later, but this is not the right mindset, right? So I'm always telling you people, so your job will not to be 100% automated, but uh, your job will change 100%, right? So that, that should be the right mindset. You will not be doing the exact same job, but you have a skill, and then this skill needs to be even upskilled. And then this is a very important when you are leading organization or part of organization to identify the where the people need to do focus in terms of the upskilling. So this is how I see the situations. Thanks for uh, for um, give this insight again, which is the mindset on where you say that uh, uh, to me when you were, you know, if I have to, uh, you know, comment what you say, it seems that the, the change, it's like a, is a kind of slow change, brick by brick. And then, of course, by time is going to, to change in this manner, because, of course, we cannot have the impact change because otherwise this uh, towards the, 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 the persona, because of course this can have uh, an impact uh, also on how, how we experience our, our, our job living. Is this um, Shinji correct or uh, what I understood from, from you or, 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 or not? So the, the problem is some, somewhere in the middle, right? So digital transformation will accelerate even more so, also because of the COVID. But it is not as easy as some people think, that's what the Gerald said so nicely in the very beginning. So you need to be part of the change. This is probably what the mindset is really required. And the, the, these people is not to, to participate, to protect the, their job, but form the next, um next normal also not just for the COVID but also for the for their organization right and the, the sense of urgency is actually here already so it's 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 so if I misread in any way to the audience I really apologize because this was not the point. The, it failed because people don't uh, people do not sometimes understand what the technology can or cannot do, but a change needs to happen. And in order to accelerate the change, you need to involve the people because your company is there because of basically what, what, they, what they do, right? Yeah. But let me just bring one element that uh, probably was a bit uh, understated. Uh, it was a statement from Gerardo, I, I think, at the beginning about uh, a bit the distance between uh, the big hype, you know, artificial intelligence, or whatever we want to call it, you know, and uh, the realization, also the, num the the many mismatch between you know the expectation. But reality is that in all this uh, transformation, whatever, the bar is set by somebody who has a completely different standards. So what I'm saying is, if you go in, uh, in Google, in uh, Facebook, uh, I can tell you their way of meaning 
using AI or doing uh, digital, whatever, has a completely different meaning, has a completely different bar on the average. So clearly, when you look uh, to their results, you think uh, that probably, you know, there is a narrative that tells you that uh, probably if you uh, take a couple of tools from GitHub, uh, you can do what they do, which is not the case. So the problem is that the bar is increasing every day. So to an extent, uh, the more we go ahead, the harder it will be in reality to compete on this territory. And this will have a huge impact on people and skills. So this is one of the reasons why you get those numbers that uh, uh, thanks uh, Shinji you were mentioning, why so many fail into something that apparently, if you look to the narrative, should be, uh, I would not call it a walk in the park, but basically, you know, technology is there, you know. Yeah, yeah, but again, the, the issue of the competence uh, is, is and the capabilities is, is something uh, something key. I think that in, in that uh, uh, in that thought, uh, there is also another te technological element that is interesting. That is the quick development of the low coding platform. So till today, I mean, coding was a kind of language for a very small circle of people. Okay, uh, with the low coding uh, and, and and the evolution also of the the the, the, the programming technologies, uh, we we are assisting a little bit of a democratization of this kind of knowledge, or at least will be more achievable. And there are also learning activity like Lambda University in uh, in the US. I don't know if you heard about it, uh, that will provide this kind of of, of skills uh, for free, but. Having said that, uh, I'm 100% agree also because uh, I know a little bit about uh, Google and Amazon company, having friends there, that there is a huge polarization in terms uh, of uh, uh, infrastructural knowledge and tools of this company in comparison to other industry. And, uh, and, and, that, and that are the cycle of the innovation. No? At the beginning, for example, the publishing in Italy, that was a uh, very nice industry, no? We will have a lot of uh, very old newspaper and uh, also a pretty working system of, of uh, uh, publicistica. And uh, at the beginning of 2000, everyone looked at Google activity like a niche. Today, they are all customers of Google and Google is squeezing the margin because you cannot, you cannot <laughs> compare with Google Ads. Okay, for example, or this kind, or this kind of two are, are so advanced. Uh, I did uh, one year ago for uh, an internal project uh, a basic course like uh, Google Ads for Dummies or something like this. Okay, on the on the, on the Google <laughs> website. Wow, I think it was not so for Dummies. <laughs> it was not so simple even interact in a meaningful way with the Google Ads platform. Okay. So uh, this is a, a very clear symptoms of, of the of the polarization that we we, we are assisting, uh, even if there are some mitigant of the polarization that came from the technology itself. Again, with the, this kind of uh, democratization of technology. Another example, uh, also the low coding, is the, is the TensorFlow and the Dialogflow platform that that this this company uh, provide to the to the people. But again, yeah, you can have. Uh, machine learning technology thanks to TensorFlow, but uh, at the end of the game, it's not your technology. It's their technology that they are using in a paper used way. Yeah, this is definitely a trend. Definitely. Thanks. Uh, super insightful again, um, but uh, super insightful because um, it, it's clear uh, how it changed also, we deep dive a bit into what is going on inside an organization uh, when it comes like uh, people as well, uh, that is uh, us and how they take over. Uh, I, I would like then now to try to uh, maybe shape uh, what we, we said, because I would like them to, of course, uh, getting or landing uh, little by little um, into, of course, uh, outside of the webinar and uh, so in our lives, because we touch so many uh, points uh, and uh, I would like then little by little to, 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 to go out. So um, 
what we said is that uh, to me it's like I see that uh, the change will come from an external. This is something that it's uh, that is being raised up, um, and then also we also uh, talk about uh, sur sur surveillance uh, because uh, before uh, there was also another word that we decided like to, you know. Uh, it was maybe a colored word, but uh, uh, it means that it's it, we are a kind of an edge on where something is going on, and not really sure that digital will make this happen. It seems that digital is kind of the engine when it comes, you know, all this heat that is creating this movement, and uh, but it ultimately will not like uh, change because it's the people that is going to make the difference. And I hope that uh, um, also trainings and the, the right mindset, especially in this very moment, we, it's, it's there uh, and see also the direction of, of the future. Future means a bit of everything because, you know, you can, future means we also then discuss it before in 2000, maybe 100. I would like now to also to um, reduce the length of the future uh, uh, until like, uh, today. Um, so I would like then to ask uh, to you, uh, what do you think is going then, in, if you uh, forecast in the next uh, two, three years, uh, in terms of uh, no, the new digital paradigm, what, it, what, what are the resources needed? Um, and how, how do you forecast uh, this new uh, digital paradigm then? Who starts? You go first at this time. Exactly. Okay. So uh, the only thing that I able to predict that in the long period everyone will be dead. So this is the only certain things. It's uh, always difficult to 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 preconize this kind of trend. But I think uh, that uh, we will see. Uh, we sh we should see an increase uh, of investment uh, also in startup but not uh, uh, sorry that startup is not to be uh, obligatory insure tech startup but tech startup in general thanks to the uh, awareness about the fact that uh, a, a big big newcomer will came outside the industry Okay, so I, I think that we see more investments in startup. We see more attention on this kind of uh, uh, operational and data standardization uh, uh, issue. Uh, I think that we will see again an increase of capabilities and knowledge of technology, of our average knowledge of technology inside the industry. And uh, in terms of technology, I really hope to start to see some of these big project of uh, machine learning, deep learning, uh, uh, coming to ground, okay, and be and be real. Start to see the first real application, you know, the, the concrete use case. And uh, regarding the other uh, ultra trend that we are hearing about, so blockchain. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I don't know actually. I have a lot of doubts about uh, how that technology will will rise in our industry and if it will rise in our industry and uh, for sure thanks to the low coding we will have more rpa uh, functionalities and more rpa project development inside the the industry because uh, uh, yeah as the, the the slide of pierluigi said a lot of investment on distribution but i think that the the the, the the gold of the digital transformation are is in the operational i mean I, i'm totally sure about it no so i think that the, the, the evolution will bring uh, naturally all the player basically all the players starting from the small insurance company till the big company to to be more focused on the, the digitalization of the uh, of the operation at least of, of course this is my my two cents Absolutely taken. Change it. Maybe I go next. So, so I guess thanks to Gerald and his efforts of the standardization, and the standardization would create a much uh, uh, bigger impact in automation. So, 
I am expecting that uh, there will be more automation in our industry. So this, of course, reduces the cost. And but uh, instead of uh, what Gerard mentioned, that uh, we have uh, more time to read the book, um, I am hoping that uh, we will have uh, more time to think about the the next insurance and because. When we talk about the digital transformation, people talk about the shifting from product centric to the the people customer centric, right? And this this kind of saving of time, rationalization, automation will create the time so that uh, I'm hoping that we are using this time to understand the customer and the customer needs and what I am. We, in this scenario, what uh, I expect to see the boundary of the insurance today would be more broad and together with a different product, a different service, and that's probably I, I would see in the next next couple of years. Thanks, Shinji. Luigi. So. I, I would probably give the same suggestion. I, I get this answer often when I speak to CEO <laughs> executive committees, you know, all this kind of uh, with our clients. And normally I always say you, you have uh, basically two things in front of you. One is about certainty. So what you can do. And uh, for example, efficiency is a certainty. So if something is an area where you can for sure recover cost, uh, you can recover uh, performance, uh, and as a byproduct, typically, of doing that right, you get also a bit in order your shop in terms of data, which is the foundation for whatever else you want to do in terms of more fancy stuff in the other side, which is the uncertainty box, where it is a growth expansion innovation. So in that territory, everything will pass through leveraging data, applying the new technologies, and probably the, the other recommendation into this box is uh, there is one thing that we are still dramatically underusing as an industry, which is uh, the mobile phone. So today there are, you know, uh, more mobile phones than people on earth. Uh, and each of these mobile phones has a between processing power, sensors, a lot of stuff. So instead, what we do is normally to, at the best, uh, let the people change their own address uh, to avoid uh, a notification of change into the policy lifecycle. So I, I think that there are these three boxes where probably we can see over the next three years. And I would bet that, of course, you know, the priority should be on the certainty and probably going a bit more selective into the other two. Thanks a lot. Uh, I much appreciate uh, your uh, your insightful uh, recommendation, comment, uh, insights, and uh, your feedback here. Um, so uh, I understood correctly that you know, and uh, even if the, the change you expect will be also maybe come from an external, and you say that the change will be done in making a standardization of the data and where we can automate and free up times uh, towards the people so that they can maybe express a better uh, their resources and where they can maybe focus more on how it can express and talking more about maybe insurance uh, towards uh, the market and as a, as a on the base also having some certainty it's it's uh, important for for the growth I would like to thank you um, all of you for your participation again. I really much appreciate. I'm uh, um, Flavio Cristiano uh, from uh, the Italian InsurTech Association. Uh, and I would like to, if there are no other questions, I would like to thank you all for attending this webinar. I'll say in the beginning, it's been recorded and you can find it uh, online. Thanks again, I appreciate and uh, Have a nice evening. Grazie Flavio, grazie per il Ciao Singi. Have a nice evening. Bye. Bye bye. Ciao Flavio, ciao Gerardo. Ciao, ciao ragazzi. Bye. bye.